great honor to me to meet you, Roger, from Agnostic Front. And today is your second to last day of the tour. You were doing uh, Europe for like 20 years. Uh, yeah. We finally, after 20 years, decided to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, you come over to Europe uh, for like 20 years. Uh, yeah. I remember that you did uh, 1992. 1993 and uh, then again with 1996 uh, uh, and uh, ever wow. since that time. I think the first time we came out here may have been 1991. 90. Uh, 90, 1990. Oh, uh, okay. So we've been coming here for, yeah, 20 years. Solid 20 years. Solid 20 years. Wow. That's quite a long time and you're even existing even longer, almost three decades and almost. you're still powerful and uh, strong with your stuff, your, your lyrics, the, the, the riffs and uh, drum fills. Uh, what motivates you to uh, still have the energy to uh, perform hardcore like way back in time? I mean, it's what motivates us is, you know, just where we live, where we come from. Um, are the lifestyle we chose, we're, we're all friends, we, we, we're brothers, we choose to live a, a lifestyle where we protect one another and, 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 and we kind of treasure what we've been doing forever and we are committed to it, we're genuine to it, mm -hmm. it's our movement, it's our scene and we love doing it, mm -hmm. straight up, that's really what it, that's the motivation to it, you know. And being that we're from Agnostic Front, we sound how we sound because we're from New York City, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where we come from. If we came from a different part, in America, we may have sounded different, you know, mm. our aggression is as, as aggressive as the, the city that actually created us, you know. You know, they fuel our fire, we give it to you. Yeah. Let's go! And I, I recall that um, you had uh, some time off, then you came back with something gotta give, and ever since your uh, drive uh, through, through your albums got more intense, to my opinion. Uh, what, where do you take your influences and uh, stuff for your albums? Like Warriors was like real family stuff. Well, I mean, our, our, to be honest, with you, our influences are just recycled of, our, of, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We uh, we've always been leaders. <clears throat> We're not really followers. Mm -hmm. We've uh, we've opened the doors. We've created the different segments and genders within our own movement. When you know, old school hardcore, uh, the crossover movement. We pioneered that. We mm -hmm. pioneered the new school movement with one voice. Mm -hmm. You know, we pioneered all this stuff within our own movement. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we just go back and. And, and just kind of relive it and mentally in our minds and musically we just borrow and adapt off ourselves you know and of course is you know we go on the road we see other bands and and you know not knowingly you get influenced too by other bands that, have, that have kind of doing the same thing of course there's little tidbits here and there mm -hmm. but mainly we just recycled ourselves you know and that's we just we keep going with it yeah, and I just heard that you're going uh, back to the studio in November. Yes. So there will be another Agnostic Front album coming up pretty soon. Right, uh, March 11th. Okay, March 11th. Yeah. Uh, can you already tell me something about the album, what it will focus on? and? Well, I mean, it's going to be a great continuation of Warriors because oh. it's going to have that aggression. But we are, it's going to have those... Hat, fast in your face songs, you know, the aggression and all that, the heaviness and quickness and fastness that everybody likes. Mm -hmm. But it's going to have a lot more sing along. It's going to be more of the For My Families, okay. more of the Gotta Goes, more of that, more sing along because, you know, more hymns, mm -hmm. more stuff people to get involved with because that's really what our music's about involvement, you know, giving and getting back. So there's going to be a lot more of that. Uh, lyrically, we're going to speak about social injustice, you know, mm -hmm. just social political stuff very rarely do we teach do we uh, touch up on any world politics yeah. 
You know, we just life experiences are life experiences. You know, what we go through, what happens to us on a day to day basis. That's where the lyrical content is going to be. Musical content is just going to be, it's going to be a really great, New York, you know, again, New York hardcore record. <laughs> Um, how much impact did it have that uh, New York seemingly has no more center where venues are in Manhattan, for example? Like, uh, I remember way back in time when I was in New York, uh, uh, it started with the trams falling away and now almost everything is gone. Well, I mean, it's a definitely a blow to the movement, to the scene. <clears throat> um, we have to take uh, the clubs outside of New York City, and uh, right now Brooklyn seems to be having the uh, the club scene for our gender of music. Everything seems to be hap happening in Brooklyn right now, in Williamsburg. That's kind of where everything seems to be happening right now, because New York has been pretty much totally regentrified, and so people have moved out into the suburbs of New York. And Brooklyn seems to be a hip place where everything mm -hmm. is music, culture, artists, everything seems to be thriving in Brooklyn. That's kind of how New York started. So that's where everything is. That's where, you know, that's where the hardcore shows are now, most okay. of them. You know, very rarely in New York, but you do get black and blue productions that put on a great show at the, the old, at the Ritz. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and then, um, you know, like we'll be playing Santos, Santos House right now in New York mm -hmm. City. So we, Every once in a while, we do go back to okay. the city to play, but Brooklyn is pretty much headquarters for that. Okay, so it had really an impact, but uh, still, it uh, seems like the uh, family back in New York uh, got even firmer together than uh, it apparently to to uh, people over here than like 20 years ago. For example, uh, looking at stuff like H2O's uh, "Nothing uh, Nothing to Prove" video, where everybody like Danny, like Lou, like Pete, sings along in one video, and even you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's that's New York, man. We always come together for all this stuff. I mean, like our our our, our video um, for my family. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of guest singers yeah. in there too. Actually, Toby's in it too. Isaac, <laughs> uh, Brian. Uh, I mean, even non like Brian. Hmm? Yeah, I'm talking about that before it's not Brian, you know? And um, it's people from even that are not part of the New York scene that have kind of contributed to our hardcore scene in it. It's, it's you know, Frankie too, Brian, Frankie, uh -huh. so they're, yeah, that before it's not guys. So, I mean, I mean, it's, it's a tight community, community, you know? We all know each other pretty well. We still, we, the family aspect of it has always been there, always will be yeah. there, you know? <laughs> And it didn't split up even though the center had to move? No, I don't think so. It's just made it, it really has made it a little tough and a little harder for starting bands. Because, okay. you know, now it's harder for, for it to have a place called home where, where bands mm. can actually start off and move. Like, it's it's uh, been a TV? long time since, yeah. since there's been a really new, fresh, young hardcore band from New York City. It's yeah. been a very, very long time, unfortunately. And it's gonna make it's gonna continue to make it harder. It's just the the boroughs, the suburbs are the ones creating the newer bands, mm -hmm. you know, like Long Island, yeah. New Jersey's, you know, the upstates. But New York City is gonna be always a little hard now because there's nowhere to go, nowhere to play. Yeah. <laughs> So tonight's almost your last day. Uh, 
I guess you had a great tour. You had lots of fun. I heard that everything was packed and full. Yeah, it was phenomenal. So what are you taking uh, home with yourself doing a tour like this? Well, I mean, it, it feels really great to, to be appreciated and the people still love you and they come out to your shows and, and they enjoy themselves. And it's good to bring that back home to you. You know, when you go home, you, you're feeling good about what you're doing. Instead of going home to like, kind of like things that didn't work out, and you like, you, you double, th you double think, you know, your mm -hmm. life is something. Like I mean, you gotta understand, this is all I've been doing my whole life. This is all I got. I've committed myself to it. And I love it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's 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 an extreme passion for me. So it means a lot to me that people give me back as much as I give to them. And that's what I go back home with, which makes it a lot easier for me to write my songs mm -hmm. and, and give them back great songs to sing with me mm -hmm. because, you know, I feel like these people want to come sing with me. So I'm going to give you a song now. Here's a song for you and me. Mm -hmm. This is for us. Let's do it together. That's, that's the feeling I'm bringing back now to put into our new record. Yeah. Pretty much uh, <laughs> agree that I, I feel that each and every time I'm listening to your music. So now let's come to the last and toughest question, because please give me a statement or a message for the viewers that you want to give, some thoughts you want to share. Well, I mean, like I said, I've always been um, very grateful of the people that come out to see us. I call them people and friends before I call them fans. Um, because you know, it's, it's really grateful, the very honor, I'm very honored that, they, that I've been inv invited to your country, invited to these shows, and I'm honored to be here. I don't take any of that for, um, for, for granted, you know, I'm very grateful of it. And like I say, I really, it makes me feel good about what I do, so it gives me that encouragement I need to go back and return and bring back something to you and it's a it's a, it's a you give I give situation and the minute it becomes like I'll take one end or I'll take the other end it's it does it's not going to work so it's been a great way this way and I think I'm, I'm very excited about it so I want to thank the people for supporting Ignacio for so many years for coming to our shows and we're we're going to always be there as long as there's always a demand for us we'll always be there and even yeah. Years past our existence, Ignacifone will always mean something as fresh to somebody a hundred years from now as it is to somebody today because our lyrics mm -hmm. is a time capsule. People will always feel that we feel forever. Yeah. Well, I thank you very, very much for the interview and hope that you have a fucking great show tonight. Thank you, man. <laughs>